Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. To be perfectly honest, I didn't want this to be my formal blog, like, or vlog for the week. I was going to do this as like an extra vlog, but um, time got away from me this week and it was kind of a weird week, so I wanted to make this a little bit more informal. Fingers crossed that it doesn't get removed by YouTube. So anyway, informal, just wanted to talk, like, I'm having one of those weeks where I'm having what I'm assuming to be some sort of like spiritual growth or something. I go through those moments sometimes. I have documented those with you guys like um, around last year, 2017, Halloween, when I was going to the museum at Zach's a lot, I had a lot of things following me home. So I was documenting that at that time. And as you guys know, I had a lot of stress like towards the end of the year. And um, I think that when you undergo stress, your, you know, sixth sense, third eye, whatever you want to call it, like, closes off because you're not, you know, welcome or open to the spirit realm because you're, you know, worried about things here on earth like your family and, and yourself. So I'm happy to say that obviously things are improving, but not in the kind of way that I would have wanted it to. So as we know, Zach's movie is coming out, The Demon House, finally, everyone's like dying for it to come out. Um, I will hopefully be announcing when I am going to see it, either the 15th or the 16th in Vegas. So I met with, I have this friend named MJ, I think I've mentioned him on social media, I met him at Barnes & Noble by accident. He worked at Barnes & Noble as a part-time job and I was going through the, the spiritual paranormal section I had picked up a book called The Necronomicon. I was going to show it to you guys, but I don't even know where it is. Anyways, um, it's kind of based on ancient Enochian spiritual stuff, which is Egyptian. I'll talk about that later. Anyway, when he saw me pick this book up, he was like, oh my gosh, I have studied Enochian and Satanism and all this stuff. And he was like, um, you know, have you read this book or this book? And so anyway, we started talking and... I couldn't believe how knowledgeable he was on not really my kind of stuff. Like, he's not really an investigator, but he has studied, like, satanic stuff and Enochian stuff and voodoo. So he was just really knowledgeable on, like, kind of the religious side of it. The dark religious side of it, should I say. It was kind of perfect timing that I met him. It was like when your worlds collide. I had been thinking, I really want to teach you guys. Like, you know how I broke up? Wiccan and pagan stuff. I wanted to do that with satanic stuff, but I don't want to discuss like the really dark stuff. There's there's two sides of Satan like worship. One side is basically just antichrist. I don't want to be part of the in crowd. That anyway, that traces back to something called Enochian culture, which is actually Egyptian culture. The other side is Luciferianism, which is like the stuff we don't want to deal with or talk about, which is the horrible things that people do to animals and sacrifices and sometimes like demonology and summoning demons. Anyway, I wanted to break those up for you guys, so I wanted to start learning about it because I thought around Zach's, you know, movie coming out, it's really just perfect timing for that to be a topic on my channel. So last weekend, it was like, I guess Sunday, maybe Saturday, we met a couple times, me and MJ, and we were talking about um, what kind of books I need to buy to like start this kind of um, resource for studying and, and so I can compile, um, you know, different ideologies that we can discuss on a philosophical level on this channel. And so he gave me names of like five or six books that he was like, they're really crucial for me to be reading um, if I'm wanting to study these things. So Sunday, I came home, I was okay. I was just, I felt like 
I felt like I was almost on like a paranormal hangover just from meeting with MJ. And I don't know why, because we didn't really discuss specifics in, you know, any dark religion or anything. We just had discussed like briefly and, and touched base on things. So I had come home that night and um, I went to bed at like maybe 10 o'clock because I had to wake up early on Monday. I swear it was the first time I had ever woke up in the middle of the night at 3, 3, 3, 3, 33 a.m. I have woke up at 3 a.m. before, I woke up at 3.30 a.m. I've never woke up at 3.33. Um, and literally I was asleep and I woke up and it was that feeling of just like someone is standing over you, like that really heavy energy of almost like, um, remember when you were a kid and if you like got up late for school, your parents would come in and like shake you to wake, that was what it felt like, that energy of someone's literally about to wake me up. So I literally woke up with these huge eyes and I was looking around the room and I was like kind of panting because I just, I thought someone was in there. And I just felt like it was a, a heavy, dark presence, but I didn't really know what it was. So to be honest, I had a really hard time going back to bed. I just, I didn't have a nightmare or anything at that point. Um, so I got up, I like, I had some water, I watched some TV um, and just was like trying to calm myself down from that feeling. I didn't really sense much else in the house. So I just kind of like shut it down at that point, went back to bed. I think it was about 4.30, 4.40, I woke up and I had had a terrible nightmare, like a horrible, horrible nightmare. Um, so I basically wanted to discuss these nightmares that I had that night. So the first nightmare was um, really odd and strange. It was a nightmare that I had bought a house and land and then Blake had bought land next to me for some reason and I was going to help him build a house on that land. And so um, there was like this sort of swamp in the middle of his land. And so we had to drain this swamp in order to build on it. So it was just weird. So all of a sudden, as we're talking, like Blake has these like really strange eyes and he's like telling me he's going to drown me in this like dirty, smelly, old brown water, like Shrek sort of swamp. And I just remember like being in my dream, like he wouldn't say something like that to me, you know? So um, I literally woke myself up. Like I, I told you guys, I've kind of taught myself how to wake up in a nightmare. And so I get cued in in nightmares and it takes practice. I, I've done videos on this before. So try to find, um, I think it was like spiritual growth or um, like empath growth, stuff like that. So I woke up and I was like, that was weird. Like I remember being in my dream thinking, yeah, I would not be around a family member or a friend that would threaten to kill me. So this is not, this isn't real. So I woke myself up. So I was in a panic. I could not go to sleep. I was sweating. I was stressed. I was like, oh great. I do not want to go back to sleep. And so I got up again and like had some water and watched some TV and then finally talked myself into going back to sleep about 20 or 30 minutes later because I knew I had to wake up the next day. So I woke up again, like I want to say maybe 5.20, 5.30 and I had had a second nightmare. The second nightmare was really, really horrific and um, I'm really sorry to share this with you guys. I'm sorry to give you the visual, but I'm gonna go ahead and tell you what this nightmare was about. So basically, um, the nightmare obviously, it never starts out as a nightmare, right? So I'm, there's six pigs around me, which I find it very odd to be connected because when we see satanic stuff and like people doing worship, especially in reenactments, you always see like pig masks and stuff like that or pig drawings on the wall. So I don't know, that has to be in relation to this somehow. So there's six little piglets around me and I'm like, oh my God, these are so cute. You know, I'm like playing with these little piglets. There's no one per se in the room with me. Um, it seems like it's maybe like a farm or something like that. And all of a sudden, like it gets really dark and I turn around and I'm in a different room and five of the six piglets are like dead and they've been pulled out of the oven and, um, there's, it's not bloody or gory, so I don't want you to get that kind of idea, but they were definitely dead. So if you can imagine, um, if anyone has ever taken biology in high school or college, they make you do, um, you know, experimental things in science or anatomy, usually with fetal pigs. They looked like that, basically fetal pigs that had come out of the oven, not burnt, not crispy, nothing like that. Just, they were dead. But I knew they were the pigs that I had just like, I love animals. You guys know I love animals. 
Um, so there's one more little piglet and I see him kind of running towards me and um, I'm trying to grab him in, in this nightmare and I'm thinking like, I guess in my mind, like if these pigs are dead, like this one's going to die or something. So I'm trying to like scoop him up and uh, it's like a typical dream. You can't physically pick it up, you know, you, like it's not real, obviously. So my hands are kind of going through him and every time I get closer, it's like um, I am doing the same thing. So finally I try to go get the piglet and something like slits its neck. Now once again, there's no one there. I don't see an image of anything in this nightmare. I don't hear a voice, nothing like that, but the, the neck gets slashed. So I know this is bad. So now I'm like, I've got to pick up the piglet. So I'm at a point in my nightmare, I'm remembering that I am screaming bloody murder. Like I'm literally screaming because I'm horrified by what I've seen. Obviously I've seen um, these piglets come out of the oven and then I've seen this piglet now get its neck slashed or cut. It's not bleeding. There's nothing gory like that, but in my head, I need to get the animal to save it or fix it or something. So I'm still trying to catch it and all of a sudden in my dream, I'm realizing you can't pick it up because it's not real. This isn't real. And so out of nowhere, I basically am like, wake up. Like this isn't real. And so I did. I woke myself up and I... I was really like nauseated. I don't want to have dreams like that. I don't like anything dark, you know, related to things like that. And um, at this point, like I really, really, really do not want to go back to bed. I didn't have to wake up super early on Monday, but I was going to get up early to do some things around the house. And then I had to go in um, to work at like, I think I had to be there at like 11 or 1130. So I still wanted to get up early to be functional. So I ended up staying up for a couple hours, maybe till 6. 30 or 7 and finally decided like you better get a couple hours of sleep like you're gonna be so tired tomorrow and um, so I don't know how I went back to sleep after both of those experiences um, but I ended up going back to sleep and I ended up waking up from a third final nightmare so this third nightmare I really can't tell you guys about because it's extremely personal um, I can, I'll tell you a little gist of it. Basically, I am with a friend. I'm with a friend that is, um, I'm with a friend that is also into paranormal ghost hunting. And this friend and I are trying to figure out what is plaguing me, I guess. And so the thing basically says that it's going to attach itself to my friend and his family and it starts killing one of his family members at a time in my dream. It's really weird because um, I never saw, there was never anything gory or violent. We just knew that one of his family members was being killed as we were going along in this dream. And I remember I literally felt myself outside of my body, like wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. You know what I mean? For some reason, I also couldn't remember to call St. Michael. I've told you guys, like I've been in my dreams before and I've remembered to call St. Michael. For some reason, I could not remember to call St. Michael. Um, usually if I even say that name or think it, like there's some sort of divine intervention, even if it's my spirit guide that helps me get out of bad dreams or nightmares. And um, so anyway, it was a really dark dream. The third one was, was pretty bad. The second one was bad. Anyway, three bad dreams, 3.33, after we were talking about, you know, some dark religions and things like that, um, and I had a rough couple of days. So the next day, um, so Monday I had to work and then, um, I, no, I didn't have a class on Monday, but I did have to work. And then I had to do social media and stuff for Ghost Girl. So I was really tired. I didn't get finished till like maybe 9 or 9.30 that night is when I got home. And I was like, you know what? I really, really need to cleanse the house and like seal the house. And I hate doing that because you have to sage and it's this really big process. But I was like, it's worth it. I'm going to do it. I don't care how long it takes. I asked Blake to help me sage and he was in a really bad mood. Like something was affecting him. He didn't want to help me. He was really grumpy. He was um, saying unsupportive things that usually like he's not like that when it comes to things, you know, in our house. Like he's not going to be denying the fact that we need to like work on this to get it out of here. So I was like, are you being affected by something, you know? And, um, I was like, how was the energy like when you came here earlier before I, I came home? And he was like, 
the TV was off and the lights were off and it was just really quiet. And I was like, that's weird because usually I have something going like for our animals. I don't like when they're totally um, home alone and it's quiet. They're rarely here alone though. Um, most of the time, even like staff is here. Some of our staff or my mom comes over a lot or family. I did do the stage and I did do the ceiling of the house. And um, first before I did the seal for the house, Blake suddenly like snapped out of his bad mood, which I was like, that was weird, whatever was affecting him. So we decided to go outside and seal the house. And I've talked about this before. This is um, the video, my house is haunted. So watch that video if you're wanting to know about, you know, the process in which I seal my house. So we went outside to seal the outside, which is usually doors, entryways, but I still make an entire barrier around the house. And when we were in the backyard, all of a sudden, we were like the very last part of the backyard like 10 or 12 bats came flying out of my trees in the backyard which is really weird i've been here for like three years and i've never had bats in my backyard bats do live in las vegas so that's that's not shocking usually they hang out around in homes that have like pools and trees because at night if the insects come out they'll eat those insects I don't have a pool in my backyard. My neighbors do have pools, but we have never had bats in our backyard. And for them to fly out and intentionally make noise as we are actually sealing the house was like so ironic and creepy. And so Blake was like, yeah, okay, now I believe you. There was something like really weird going on in the house. So I did end up sealing the house and I, I haven't had nightmares since Monday. And uh, usually I seal it well enough that I don't have issues for a while. So I'm hoping that it, it stays that way. I did have some really weird like accidents though, like falls this week um, that were not at home, like outside of the house. So like I went to the grocery store a couple days ago and um, I had like nothing special on like sweatpants outfit like a Betsy Johnson sweatpants outfit and I was walking and there was like a cap like a like a white cap to a chapstick that was on the ground and it was perfect enough where like I slipped up in the air on the cap and fell really hard in the parking lot like I fell so hard to the point where like six people came rushing over to help me get up because it was like one of those really bad falls. In fact, right here on my arm and right here on my arm, I have these like um, <laughs> swelling things that are coming up. Can you see that? That's one of them. And then the really big one is on the back side of my arm. And I also um, hurt my knee really bad. So I've had some really weird things happening. I know a lot of people are gonna say, oh, you shouldn't be studying that stuff. You shouldn't be looking into that stuff if it's affecting you that badly. I appreciate you guys, but you also know that like I'm a science mind. You know that I love reading, I love philosophy, I love learning about you know, religion and paranormal and all this stuff. And most of all, I like to learn and teach you guys. So don't tell me not to study it because I'm still going to. I will say that even though this stuff is scary and weird and dark and I'm unsure of it, I am happy in a sense that I haven't like lost my spark of going through like spiritual awakenings or whatever because um, I haven't had one for a while. Like, you know, I think October, November was the last few that I had. So when I go through these weird things or nightmares or whatever I'm experiencing, that means that I'm having one of those like spiritual growths where I'm connecting deeper with the other side, which I still appreciate no matter what the topic is. My question to you guys, have you guys ever woke up at 3.33 a.m.? Have you ever had three consecutive really bad nightmares where each one got worse and worse? I can't help but feel like by the third nightmare, it, whatever it is, was mad that it could not get me scared or make me upset, affect me, I guess, I'm not sure. And once again, I never saw visually anything. I never, um, you know, I can't really pinpoint exactly what it was. I do know it's somehow related to opening my mind up and learning about, you know, these different religions um, that are not the safest religions to be practicing. Make sure you guys give my video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Winchester House review will be coming shortly, and I will catch you guys next time. Hell yeah.